Hey, so do you know what implicit bias is? In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to be sharing with you why you need to know about implicit bias as a business owner. So hi y'all, thanks so much for joining me. So please like and share this video if you get value from it. So I'm Dr. P, I'm a strategic business coach and I've been a school psychologist for about 10 years, K-12 schools on the East Coast and West Coast, served in professional organization committees at the local level, the state level, national level, international level. And I've also been, um, still am, a part-time professor for school psychology program at the master's level. So as a practicing school psychologist and even a school psychology faculty, I know and I've seen the, the result of having that culturally responsive practices, right? And it's not an easy task to really engage in culturally responsive practices. It really isn't because there are things that you have to learn about yourself and you also might not be ready to learn it or may not even want to learn it. I mean, I have met a combination of those type of people, you know, that didn't necessarily want to learn it and then others who are afraid to really learn about themselves because to engage in culturally responsive practices, you have to know a lot about yourself and it includes the positive and it also includes the negatives as well. And when you have culturally responsive practices, you promote an inclusive environment, right? You have a more inclusive environment, including people from all, you know, with all aspects of diversity. So as a school psychologist, I learned and I demonstrated the importance of being aware of prejudice that existed in some of our psychological assessments that were available. Some have made some huge um, advancements in their revisions because they've noticed the shortcomings and they've actually done some research wherein they've made their, what you call a norming sample, that population that you do all your testing on to make sure that the assessment is going to be valid for various populations. A lot of the testing companies, they have changed their procedures to make it more inclusive and more representative of the U.S. But the reason why I have brought, brought up that part is because there was a point in time when they weren't that inclusive. So when it came to certain students from certain races, ethnicities, and cultures, it wasn't necessarily the best way to represent their strengths or their weaknesses, right? And it was really interesting. Again, I've worked in forest to hit in two countries, and I've seen how that impact of not understanding biases, prejudice, stereotypes, how that can impact how you make your decisions, right? So working in the schools, I saw instances wherein you know, if a child was from a certain ethnicity, they were more likely to refer for special education, more likely to refer for gifted, or more likely to be referred for suspension or expulsion. And the reason why I'm highlighting this is because a lot of why I saw in schools, it wasn't just from the student perspective, it was also from the adult perspective and how their beliefs were impacting decisions that were happening for students or with students, really is the other thing I should say. So, for instance, I've seen it where a child whose parents identify as Asian, they were less likely to be referred for special education consideration, even when they were struggling significantly. I've also seen it where students whose, students whose families identified as Black or African American were by far more likely to be referred for special education concerns especially behaviors and especially in boys, right? So saw that and who's doing the referrals? Adults are. And I even witnessed different outcomes when it came to altercations among students. Students from particular backgrounds, if they were identifying as Hispanic or Latinx or Black or African American, their consequence was more likely to be a suspension or an expulsion. And again, I'm mentioning these things for a reason because it were adults. There were adults making decisions about students. And as business owners, we made decisions as well about certain individuals from certain backgrounds. That's why I want to bring this up. Because like I said, not everything was only with the students. I also saw differences with staff. And it was how staff from certain backgrounds interacted with other staff members from other backgrounds. And if you doubt me, Think back to when you used to work in a big organization, or you might still be working in a big organization as you're developing your business on the site, 
or even your current organization that you have, when you sit by at a staff meeting and just see how people sit in a staff meeting. I know virtually you don't necessarily see that because people pop up on your screen however they you know came into the call. But when you are in a face-to-face -face environment, you're going to see differences in how people sit at those meetings. And then the next meeting, you're going to see the same seating pattern. When you look around the room, I'm telling you, it is going to be noticeable. It was noticeable to me, and I know it's going to be noticeable to you when you sit and don't actually pay attention to this. So I've seen it where staff members sat in small groups based on their shared identification in a specific racial or ethnic group or they've even sat in their groups based on age or based on the department they're in or even the number of years in the school and school district in the organization and why am i mentioning this because when it came to forming groups or teams guess how those teams were formed they were formed with the same people who identified similarly right and when it came to having somebody outside of their group join that team Think about what happened. Let me tell you, it was conflict, it was distrust, it was lack of cooperation, and I could go on about the number of negatives that would come of it. But what I really want to emphasize is what was really at play a lot of times were stereotypes and biases. Those were things that were in play when adults were working in their teams, and there were still the same things that were in play when adults were making decisions about students. Right? Whether they were good decisions or the bad decisions, there were stereotypes that were coming into play. So have you heard about biases and stereotypes? I know you've heard me mention biases and stereotypes, but have you heard about them? And have you really sat down and thought about how they impact our decision making and our interactions with others? So in this video, I'm going to share a little bit about the impact because implicit bias, biases on a whole, there's so much information and I want to just have less than 15 minutes with y'all, right? So just want to share some information. Specifically, I want to talk about implicit bias because have you ever seen that iceberg or maybe a tree that talks about the elements of color, or a culture or diversity and that you see in people in the part that you show you at the top and then there's some that they show you beneath the surface. So even if you have or if you've not, oftentimes biases play a role in how we interact with others and where they fall in that iceberg or that tree is usually below the surface and they play a huge role in how we interact with others and how we make decisions on a daily basis so as a business owner we need to be familiar and aware of our implicit biases and how it impacts our our businesses so the perception institute describes implicit bias as attitudes towards people or associate stereotypes with them without our conscious knowledge. The Perception Institute even mentioned a common example as being studies that show that white people will frequently associate black people with criminality even without realizing that they're doing that, right? So the Perception Institute was just talking about some research that exists, that they were just summarizing. So it's important to know about implicit bias because most of the actions that we take occur without us consciously thinking about them. Hey, Daily Victories is in the house. Hey, Samantha, just talking about implicit bias today. And as I was saying, with implicit bias, most of our actions, they occur without us consciously thinking about them, right? So Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy added that implicit bias can determine the prejudice and stereotypes that people act on without intending to do so. So what does any of this have to do with us being business owners? It has tons to do with us being in business owners. So I'm just going to name a few because with our impl implicit bias, it can impact who we select to receive services from. It can impact who we pick as our vendors. It impacts who we hire as our staff, as our team members, who we decide to partner with who we decide to send referrals to or even re receive re referrals from. And it can also impact how we respond to emails, how we respond to phone calls. Inc.com added that implicit bias can, in, can come into play when everyone in your business is a clone of you. I mean, if you're hiring people and they all look like you, have the same skill set, sets as you, 
You need to do a little stock check and see if you got some biases coming into play with how you're doing your hiring. And if you have team members that are in leadership roles and others that are not, do all the team members in the leadership role look like you, have the same skill sets as you, then that's another case where your implicit bias could be coming into play. And one more thing, your implicit bias could be coming into play if you are paying men more money than you're paying women on your team for the same job. So implicit bias is crucial and we need to be aware of our biases and our stereotypes and how they're impacting our businesses. Because remember, implicit bias involves our attitudes and actions that we take that are based our on our unconscious thinking so it has a huge role like i said to play in how we pick vendors how we pick our service providers how we hire team members maybe even how, how you fire team members as well you know and if you choose to refer someone to another business or accept their referral all those things can be coming in um, can be impacted by our implicit bias and if you're wondering if this is really even making any sense is Think about a vendor or an applicant that you have refused to do business with or refused to hire. Make a list of pros and cons of what that person actually brought to the table. Not what you thought they were bringing, but what they actually brought to the table. And see if your list of pros is longer than your cons, but yet you still decided you weren't going to do business with them. Even though that vendor had exactly what you were looking for and wanting, for some reason you still decided you didn't want to do business with them. Or if it's an applicant and they had the skill sets and they were aligned with the values and mission of your business, but yet you still didn't want to hire them. Just think about the impact of your implicit bias possibly on your decision making for those instances. Just some things for you to think about. Our unconscious thinking is rooted in what Hammond calls our deep culture. And it involves how we make sense of the world, how we create our self-concept, so it's really deep rooted because remember at the beginning I was talking about that tree or that iceberg. So in the tree concept, you do have the unconscious, unconscious, um, unconsciousness really exists in the roots and that's where your implicit bias comes in. It's below that surface. It's really deep ingrained in how we are in our experiences with us growing up. So as business owners who want to expand your business, uh, and I'm not just talking about hiring on new staff, but from a collaboration and connecting point of view, and even from an increase in a revenue point of view, I really encourage you to become familiar with your implicit bias. And if you truly want to learn more about your implicit bias, I encourage you to take the Harvard Implicit Association test. It can give you some really useful information. The students that I teach in the school psychology program, we have a course where they actually have to take this test and we talk about it. We talk about the results. Even clients that I coach, we also go through this if I see it as something that we need to be addressing. And if we see it, really, it's a collaborative process in coaching. So if we see it as a need that we need to be addressing, we do look at this test. And let me tell you, the results of it help so tremendously because you might learn some things about yourself that you had no idea were going on. Because it has happened with my students and it has happened with clients wherein they see the results and what they see is like, whoa, but that's not how I thought about myself. You know, I thought of myself this other way, but this is telling me that I lean this way. So it really is an eye-opening experience. So if you haven't already taken one of those implicit assessments, I highly recommend that you do. Because once you go over the results, you're going to learn a lot of things about yourself and also learn how you can move forward and really create that inclusive environment in your workplace because diversity is important for any business to grow and diversity comes in several different forms so if you want your business to grow you have to look at that role of diversity so thank you so very much for joining thanks samantha for sticking around here um remember solutions plus actions equals results i'm dr priscilla kuser with priscilla kuser consulting solutions bye y'all